Thor Love and Thunder is a full-blown comedy, more in line with Austin Powers than, say, Thor 1. I'm not mad, I'm disappointed. <music> Director Taika Waititi is back for Thor Love and Thunder after doing Thor Ragnarok, which I thought was awesome. I love Thor Ragnarok, it's one of my favorite MCU movies. Definitely in the top 10 range for me. So after seeing this, I start to question my own taste. That's not fair to myself. Thor Ragnarok is absolutely awesome still because it does a great job marrying action, comedy, drama, and spectacle into one beautiful two-hour film. This, however, goes so far in the comedy space that anytime something serious happens, you're just waiting for the next joke to discredit it. As my intro stated, I'm not mad, I'm disappointed because I didn't hate Thor Love and Thunder when I realized very early on that this was not going to be a movie I could take seriously and I'm just here to get some laughs and walk away and not think twice about this film ever again. The part that disappoints me is it should have been so much more, especially hot off the heels of some great Thor outings in both Ragnarok and Infinity War slash Endgame. Hemsworth doesn't miss a beat playing the character, still looks like a, I mean, he looks like a god. He's massive, he's impressive to look at, he's a specimen uh, beyond all compare. His dialogue, however, and the way he carries himself are full-blown parody at this point. He's a character of, his, of Thor 1 and 2. Joining him on his misadventures is Natalie Portman as Jane. Remember, remember Jane, everyone's favorite from, from the old films? Sarcasm? After an extended break, she's back in the mix, this time donning her own armor and that hammer, that trusty Mjorn, Mjornin, Mjorn, I, I can never say it. The hammer that Thor loves. And that's where the bulk of the comedy comes from. Not so much his infatuation with Jane and the one that got away, but that of his hammer and how he has to deal with Stormbreaker and the jealousy between these two objects. Again, it's, it's Zoolander, okay? It's Austin Powers. There were a series of web shorts that came out years ago where Chris Hemsworth played Thor, but he was in a more comical situation like an office space or just in an apartment with a roommate. These were only like five to 10 minute long things and they were just total comedies through and through. They were very funny. I liked them. I never really thought of them as being part of the Thor universe though. They were just kind of their own little spin-off things. I think Thor Love and Thunder, and I hate myself for saying this because almost all the Disney Plus shows are trash, would have worked better as a Disney Plus show. And with it would be the understanding that this is not the Thor 4 we were expecting to see. This is like a side story, a, a fun little spin-off. And then we would get the real Thor 4 in, in a year or so. I brought up Jane. I'm not done with you yet, Missy. Everything she says is absolute cringe. And that's not the fault of Natalie Portman, although I feel like I say that a lot. But maybe it is her fault too. Anyway, she plays Lady Thor here. She's flying around, jumping, doing all sorts of cool stuff. And I was worried it wouldn't be justified. She would just get the hammer because she's suddenly worthy and that would be that. But no, it, a lot of montages in this. But he does take some time to build this character and why she's worthy. And, and the explanation behind it is actually very compelling and dramatic. It should be far more dramatic, actually. And there's lots of stuff like that sprinkled through this script where I could look at it and say, man, there was actually a really good emotional story at the core here, but Taki just wanted to make a comedy, so all the stuff that should be focused on is just brushed aside. It's just glossed over so quickly. Because the Jane Foster stuff, that was a movie, and it's a movie that I think would have worked really well. It's funny, Kat Dennings shows up for a small little scene here, and she was the comic relief in the first two Thor movies that were much more serious. Now, somehow, she's like the straight man of these films. Because they've gotten so Looney Tunes bonkers, she comes off as the most sane one. Just a weird, uh, weird flip. Ragnarok's Valkyrie and Korg are both back. They're perfect. Zero complaints about them. I would have liked to see even more Valkyrie. The Guardians of the Galaxy are here too, briefly, for about five to eight minutes. They, do, they don't last long, which sucks. I wanted them in this longer, especially with the tease at the end of Endgame that this was going to be a As Guardians of the Galaxy adventure they would go on. The Dark Knight himself, Christian Bale, is here playing Gore. Not to be confused with Thor or Korg. Lots of, lot of ores in this film. I'm not going to lie, I was getting some Tommy Lee Jones Batman and Robin vibes from this guy. 
Uh, it's unfortunate Christian Bale's an amazing actor, but again, I think it's because he's kind of overly serious and hamming it up. Contrasting that with everyone else who looks like they're in a Space Jam movie, it's tough. It's a tough thing to see. I said this works better as a Disney Plus show, not just because of the script, but because of virtually everything happening in here. This is a movie that probably costs a stupid amount of money, but looks like a TV show production oftentimes. They're not even trying anymore. It's just scene after scene of actors in front of green screens. I'm so sick of it. Like, I know nothing's real. And granted, yeah, oftentimes they're in big coliseums or on a different planet and, you know, we don't have that stuff readily available, but you can build things. I've seen Lord of the Rings. They build shit. They make costumes that don't look like knockoffs from that pop-up Halloween store. And that's another thing. These costumes are so bad. Thor looks like a jackass in this. In this movie, everything is just noise. And not only is the noise coming from the colors, it's coming from the music and the sound effects. Remember the screaming goat meme from a couple years back? Pepperidge Farm remembers. He uses it like 15 times and I'm not even being over the top. I think there's 15 legitimate goat screams in this. A lot of action in this. It's 50-50 whether it's played as a serious moment or something out of a Hot Shots film. And again, 90% of it's in front of a green screen with fake weapons. So it's just watching actors pretending like they're me, like in front of a green screen, just ha ha <laughs> Throws the hammer, sprays off always. <laughs> goat sound effect. Guns N' Roses song number three playing in the background. <laughs> and speaking of which, what the hell happened here? Does Disney have stock in Guns N' Roses merchandise? Or what, what sort of synergy bullshit is taking place? Not only is there Guns N' Roses songs prominently featured, there's a poster in the background of a kid's bedroom. Another kid is wearing a Guns N' Roses t-shirt. What is going on with the Guns N' Roses? There's a kid in the movie that wants to be called Axel. I don't, I don't get this. There is some jackass executive that's using this whole film as a case study to sell to different bands or some shit. I guarantee you, they're like, all right, uh, let's put a Guns N' Roses song in here and let's have a t-shirt and a kid change his name and all this stuff. And then we're gonna look at Spotify and iTunes and record sales. We're gonna look at the charts and the schematics and we're gonna see what changes and how much influence we have. And then we can package that and sell that going forward as a perk. Like, look, we're making the next Black Panther. You wanna be the next Kendrick Lamar? We got a slot for you. It only costs $7 million. We'll drop a name, we'll have a kid wear a backpack, maybe a hat. That's cash money penis in your pocket, baby. Long story short, if you're looking for a Thor movie that's gonna respect the source material, uh, it's gonna treat gods and goddesses and different characters, walks of life with respect, don't, don't watch this movie. If you go in with the knowledge that this really is nothing more than a comedy you can get some laughs out of it and you can have a good time like I did. Just because I enjoyed it on a superficial level though, doesn't mean I'm not incredibly disheartened. Absolutely devastated that this is the route they went. Huge misstep for me, huge. I talked long enough, now I wanna hear from you. Let me know in the comments if you saw Thor Love and Thunder or if you have zero interest because of what you heard or what you've seen so far. Maybe you don't like Ragnarok, in which case I can't imagine a single living being would like this film if they don't like Ragnarok. In fact, this is one of those movies where you're not gonna gain any new supporters and you're probably gonna lose a good chunk of them that came from Thor 3. Make sure to vroom, take that hammer and whoosh, smash that subscribe button so you don't miss a single episode. I post tons of movie and TV show related content all the time. I'm about to watch the finale of Boys season three and then I plan on doing a review of that whole show so far. So stick around for that and hopefully I see you next time. What the hell was Russell Crowe in this? He, he was supposed to be Zeus, but he came off like that gay golden robot from Futurama. Can't remember his name. The Caesar bot or whatever. Yeah. Anyway, I'm on Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies 
or you become a member right here on YouTube via that YouTube join button. It, uh, it's just a nice way to show support for the channel when YouTube clearly doesn't give a crap about it. One dollar a month, five dollars a month, you can give whatever you want. You can just say, hey, Adam, stay the course. I like your honest reviews. Keep doing you, dude. I'll support you for it. Thanks.